Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Reepy Ron, and today we're going to be going over the advanced builds and loadouts for Gunslinger. First off, we're going to be talking about the builds, and then we're going to be talking about five different loadouts that you can use with Gunslinger. Gunslinger has a lot of weapons, so they can use quite a few things. Um, we'll be talking about the pros and cons to each of them, and going over Gunslinger's strengths. So, in the builds, um, right now there's really only one slash two ish builds for gunslinger and it depends on which weapons you're using and really which level 25 you prefer so the first build is the most common build that you're going to see most gunslingers use and it's pretty much the strongest build for gunslinger so at level five we're going to go with quick draw this makes it so we uh, reduce recoil penalty from shooting from the hip as well as increase our movement speed by 5%. We also get faster weapon switch speed by 50%. This one just helps out with all of your weapons, and it's generally the best overall of the two level 5 skills. Now, Steady can be used with certain weapons, and I'll go over that in just a little bit when we discuss the second-ish build for Gunslinger. At level 10, we go with Rack'em Up. Rack'em Up makes it so consecutive headshots give you increased damage, 10% per headshot, up to 50%, uh, and then it will stay at 50% so long as you're hitting headshots. This counts for all of your perk weapons, so this uh, counts for your 9mm pistol. This is much better than uh, Bone Breaker. You'll be doing way more damage, uh, and you'll be hitting headshots, which is where you'll be doing the most damage naturally, whereas Bone Breaker wants you to hit the limbs. This isn't very good for uh, the higher difficulties. You will be losing out on a lot of damage if you go with Bone Breaker. In level 15, uh, we go with Speed Loader. This just makes it so we reload our weapons faster. It's a nice quality of life perk. It just lets us reload all of the weapons a little bit faster so that we can stay in the fight longer. Uh, this pairs quite well with uh, quick draw because you can weapon switch so fast so you can weapon switch, reload a gun, and then switch back to another weapon if you don't want to use that for whatever reason. These two work very well in conjunction. At level 20, we would go with Skullcracker. This makes it so headshots to Zed slow them down by 30%. Multiple headshots do not increase the slow. It doesn't stack the slow each time you hit a headshot, but it does reset the uh, counter of the slow. If you have Skullcracker and you're level 20 Gunslinger, you can outrun anything if you hit it in the head. Uh, there's nothing that can actually catch up to you in a straight line run. So unless you bump into something or somebody else blocks you, um, it shouldn't matter. And then at level 25, it's your choice between Whirlwind of Lead and Fanfire. Whirlwind of Lead makes it so that you have infinite ammo. This can be really useful if you're using the Grenade Pistol because the Grenade Pistol can just keep firing without needing to reload during Zed time then, which is pretty fun and pretty handy. Um, it's also good if you're just finding yourself running out of ammo or if you're taking a loadout that you intend on upgrading and only taking like two weapons, then having infinite ammo is pretty good. Our other option is uh, Fanfire. This makes it so we shoot three times faster uh, and reload in real time during Zed time. This one allows you to have much more damage per second. Um, you'll likely be able to empty out your guns and then reload them during the Zed time. Uh, but you might not be able to empty them again. So it's kind of useful, but it's not one of the best Zed time perks. Honestly, Gunslinger doesn't have the best Zed time perks in the game, but they're not bad ones either. Um, the second build that Gunslinger kind of has is, uh, besides just sw switching between level 25s, is switching to Steady at level 5. Keeping everything else the same, but switching to Steady. This makes it so you ignore the move speed penalty when uh, ADSing, and you get 7.5% more damage. Uh, this also reduces the weapon bob for perk weapons. This is the big thing for it. Um, this is very good with the dual glocks. Um, it can be good with the 500 magnums too if you're having trouble with their recoil because they do have a lot of recoil. So you can use steady with them. This will give you a little bit more damage, but 7.5% more damage is not a huge amount for Gunslinger. It's not going to make a huge difference. Um, pretty much I only really use this if I'm using the dual Glocks. If I'm not, then I pretty much always pick Quick Draw, and even when I am using the Glocks, half the time I pick Quick Draw anyway. So, let's get into a game and talk about some of Gunslinger's strengths. Alright, so we start out with our dual 1858 revolvers. These are decent enough guns at the start. They don't do a particularly huge amount of damage or anything, but they are fairly accurate. So the first loadout I'd recommend is an extremely cheap loadout and a very effective loadout. This is best for people that might not have the best aim, but still want to play Gunslinger and still want to be helpful for their team. This is going with the Centerfire and the Medic Pistol. In general, the Medic Pistol should always be taken with Gunslinger if you have the weight. 
Um, unless you manage to have a loadout that exactly fills up your weight, which is a little bit unlikely, you should have a medic pistol uh, with you. Because the medic pistol is just so useful. It's extremely cheap. You can heal allies with it. Uh, it does so much. And since it's an unperk weapon, it can stack rack them up and it can stack a pretty high amount of damage. You don't necessarily need anything else with this loadout. You can just start upgrading them. You should be able to get this loadout extremely uh, early on. And you'll just want to be using the center fire for large enemies and using the medic pistol as your backup weapon. Uh, one of your biggest strengths as Gunslinger is your movement speed. You have the most movement speed out of anybody. So you can outmaneuver any enemy. Which makes it so if the team is getting split up, it's not necessarily a bad thing for you to do a loop around the map and try to get back to your team. Uh, you should be safe, at least in most maps, most large maps. Smaller maps, you'll have a bit more trouble with this. The center fire, you can honestly use body shots for small enemies, and then try to hit large and medium enemies with headshots. Um, there is a technique that you can do with this too, against larger enemies like flesh pounds and scrakes which is uh, just stack the rack em up with something like your medic pistol or your regular 9mm up to 5 and then switch your center fire and then hit them in the head. You'll be doing the most amount of damage that way. Alright, so the next loadout I'd recommend and a loadout that I take really often with Gunslinger is this. So this is the dual Desert Eagles, the dual 500 Magnums, and the medic pistol. With this I usually upgrade the uh, Desert Eagles all the way. You could upgrade the Desert Eagles once and then upgrade the 500s if you want. The 500s will do more damage, but the Desert Eagles will do more damage per second. Um, I usually upgrade them. This is a very high damaging build, and you do have the Medic Pistol to either use it to stack rack them up or to just heal your allies with and be a uh, utility weapon. So to me, it doesn't really matter whether I'm using the 500 Magnums against small stuff or big stuff or the Desert Eagles against small stuff or big stuff. They're both really good at killing just about everything. So I do mix... I do mix them up and then I use the uh, medic pistol against small stuff or if I'm completely out of ammo with the other two. Uh, this build really rips through uh, bosses very quickly. Especially if you can consistently hit headshots. And both weapons are pretty forgiving against small enemies. You can usually hit body shots even on six man hell on earth and still be doing enough to kill them. These weapons also have a good amount of penetration, so they can punch through multiple enemies too. So usually there's some Zeds that you should avoid fighting as each of the classes. With Gunslinger that's not really the case. You can fight pretty much everything whenever you want. Um, whether that be Scrakes, Flesh Pounds, any sort of enemies. So long as you have enough room to move, or you're confident that you can kill enemies very quickly. Um, like those, then it's not a big deal. And against small enemies, like I said, the 500 Magnums or the Desert Eagles can usually one-hit small enemies. So fight whatever you want so long as um, you intend on killing it. All right, now the third loadout I recommend is this, going with the 500 Magnums, the dual uh, 2011s, and once again, a medic pistol. You can upgrade either the 2011s or the 500 Magnums. It's your choice. The 500 Magnums if you want more just raw damage, the 2011s if you want more damage per second. We've already talked about the 500 Magnums, so let's talk about the 2011s. These are, well, essentially the 1911s, but there's four of them rather than two now. You can stack rack them up faster with this because you fire out two bullets. Each bullet can trigger rack them up once. So... If you hit a Zed that doesn't die with one bullet and you hit it with the second bullet and maybe it does die or maybe it doesn't, you will get to rack them up. So you can stack rack them up faster. It requires uh, less headshots, but as you can see when I was hitting those Zeds, they were just dying from one bullet. So it didn't matter that two bullets were hitting them. Which isn't a big deal, you get plenty of ammo with these. And they're fairly controllable. Um, these are more controllable than the Desert Eagles. You won't be doing as much damage per second, nor as much damage per shot as the Desert Eagles. But you do have um, larger magazines, and you can trigger rack them up easier. I use this loadout pretty often too. Also, as you can kind of see, if there are two Zeds nearby one another, the bullets just kind of naturally try to split and hit enemies' heads anyway, which is 
useful. It makes the weapons a lot better than they uh, would seem to be. All right, so this next loadout's kind of a weird one, but I've kind of liked using it recently. This is going with the Winter Bites and the Center Fire, again with the Medic Pistol as a backup weapon uh, that you can heal with. This is a loadout that I usually take if I jump into a game midway through. The Winter Bites are pretty strong in that circumstance. Um, or they can be good if you want to be a um, more of a supportive gunslinger. I would still recommend that you take a high damage weapon with them. Something like the center fire is cheap and is very strong. Um, the 500 magnums work really well. The desert eagles work really well. All right, let's see if we can freeze this Scrag. Okay. The idea is basically to freeze the enemy and then get free shots with the center fire. Or the 500 magnums or desert eagles, whatever you're using. Um, that usually works out just fine. Um, for that mode, we had a little bit of an easier time. And that's the uh, the simple thing about this. You also don't necessarily need upgrades with these. They work fine without them. Same with the center fire, but they could benefit from them. The center fire gets way stronger if you cho if you do choose to upgrade it. All right, and the fifth and final loadout that I will recommend for Gunslinger is this. The dual Glock 18s with Desert Eagles and with a Medic Pistol. I would recommend upgrading the Glock 18s. Um, you don't necessarily need upgrades in the Desert Eagles. And the Medic Pistols is always a recommendation for any Gunslinger loadout, pretty much. The Glock 18s are incredibly strong. They do a lot of damage per second. Um, they can kill large or small things very quickly. They do have limited range, though. Um, the dual 18s do not have the best range, and they do have a good amount of uh, recoil. You can use this pretty much like a submachine gun though against smaller enemies, usually just going for body shots. Against large enemies, you can easily get tons of headshots on them. Uh, holding down the triggers for a prolonged amount of time though is difficult. It's hard to fight the recoil, but you can do it with a little bit of practice. These guns can run through ammo quite fast though. If you're not paying attention, you can run yourself completely out of ammo pretty quickly with the Glocks. Then you have your Desert Eagles as your backup weapons. You can use these against anything, small, medium, or large enemies. Desert Eagles work pretty well against all of them. And then if you run out of ammo with all of them, you can use your Medic Pistol, or if you need to fall back on this to heal allies, or if you're just doing what I'm doing, picking off crawlers. But the Glock 18s can kill Flesh Pounds quite fast. Um, without too much trouble as long as you are hitting those headshots. So that'll do it with the advanced gunslinger loadouts and builds. Um, gunslinger is one of the strongest perks in the entire game because you can do so much damage and because you have so much mobility. Uh, they have a lot of very powerful weapons like the 500 magnums, the 2011s, the desert eagles, uh, even the rhinos can be pretty decent, the 1911s can be pretty decent. You have a lot of options with Gunslinger, and you can make use of them very, very well. Thank you guys so very much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys are new here and you're not already subscribed, be sure that you get subscribed. That way you get notifications whenever I post any of these videos. I hope you guys all have a great day, and I will talk to all of you guys next time. Till then, stay cool, and bye!